Hi friends! I uh, wanted to come on today and talk to you about AppliQuick Paper. Um, it's also known as a stabilizer and this is what's uh, used in the AppliQuick method of hand applique. If you watch my tutorial there's information um, and visuals on how this is used in the process but it's kind of a key to the process. Um, you trace your templates on them, you cut them out, you fuse them to your fabric and then um, it leaves you with a, a kind of an, a perfect edge to turn your pieces over. Um, it's not too soft so that you know it's you can do a real clean um, edge onto your piece is what I'm trying to say. This helps with that and um, I often get asked about um, you know alternative things that you could use, alternative stabilizers um, you know is what do I know of something else that would work um, and the answer is no I don't um, but I do think there's a lot of people out there that that um, experiment and that have found alternatives that work for them. Um, I just really like the AppliQuick paper, but I also realize that it is a there is a cost to it. It's not cheap. It's a quality product, and um, when you're making a quilt like the one I'm making, the Raven by Blackbird Designs, the pieces are large, and that can use up a lot of paper. Um, so I, I sell the paper in my shop by the yard. I would think maybe you'd need three or four yards of the stabilizer. I haven't been tracking and it's going to be different for everyone because um, it depends how you lay out your shapes onto the paper. But again, it can add up, especially if you're doing a lot of applique and you're using the AppliQuick method. So I recently took a class with um, kind of I'd call her an expert. She's an amazing quilter um, called Catherine, we Catherine Wiley, and I took an AppliQuick class from her. And she showed a tip, and I wanted to pass it along to you all. Um, and I can see that this would be a good way to save um, some AppliQuick paper, especially when you're working with bigger pieces like you do in um, Blackbird Design patterns. So I'm going to bring you over to uh, my ironing board and um, show you what I'm talking about. I am working on block four of the Raven quilt and I thought this pumpkin here would be a good opportunity to try out this method that I learned which is very simple and it basically entails um, when making the shapes out of the applique paper so let me show you the template there that's the middle of the pumpkin so it's pretty big here's one of the sides and basically the idea is this would be the shape you cut out of your applique paper but then um, you know cut out the paper so that you're only using the outside edge and then saving this and then you can you know use it on this leaf right here so I have done that um, with one of the sides of the pumpkin I cut out the applique paper in the shape and then I cut out the inside and I ironed it onto the fabric I thought what I would do is show you how I've done that so do one like it and then show you some another trick we could try. So I'm just gonna, you know, just like in kind of a kindergarten trick, you fold the paper and you cut it and now you've got a hole and then I'm just gonna go around and I'm leaving myself about half an inch. You could try it less than that. I just want to make sure it's fairly sturdy, especially when I lay it down to iron. Um, if it was just a skinny line, I think it might be harder to stabilize it in place. Alright, so I am going to lay this down for ironing, and it works. I mean, it, it's not too hard to keep it where it should be. I think originally, when I had thought in the past to do this, I'd just been nervous that it was going to lose its shape. One thing I would also keep in mind is if this was like a, a white fabric or a very, very light colored fabric, um, I would think twice about doing this method because um, if the fabric behind it or piece behind it, whatever you're applicating on top of, is a darker fabric, you might get some, I guess you might maybe call it shadowing. 
because the outer edge would be a different shade than the inside, if that makes sense. Just something to think about. All right, so this is all set for me to cut out. So that works good. And then I have this piece left over that I can use on um, other pieces in the block. So this is my center of my pumpkin. I am going to lay this down and fuse it as if I was just making a piece normally and not trying to save paper. Okay, so it's on there, ready to go. I could cut this out. But what if I decided, wait, I don't like this color or I got it off the bias that I wanted it or I just learned this cool new tip about cutting out the middle and now I wasted my paper. It's not hard to just peel this right off. Right? No damage to the fabric. Probably a little less glue on this thing, but I will show you. But it will still fuse. And I imagine you can probably figure out how I learned that this works. <laughs> done it multiple times now and it actually it works and I'm very thankful for that because after you take the time to trace and cut out your shapes and then realize you know you pick the wrong fabric or whatever I mean there we go it's, it's stuck on there and I'm gonna leave that and that's what I'm gonna use when I do this shape so those are my tips for you um, on possible ways to save paper I have not been using those methods um, up until now and now I'm going to be implementing them and I'm excited about it um, if you do know of alternatives to apply quick paper that work better for you or the same and are cheaper um, feel free to share those in the comments with each other um, I like I said I'm not really looking for an alternative at the moment um, but that information could be useful to others so Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you later.